Hi folks, this is DIY Guy 123 and I'm here to talk to you today about a screen door, a patio door problem that we were having. It wouldn't slide very well at all. You could you could force it, but you'd stress the frame of the screen door and it made an awful noise and you just you knew it wasn't working properly. So there are a couple of things to note on the door. Uh, the door fits in a track in the bottom and in the top of the door frame. So two tracks and there are wheels on each of the four corners. And I'll show you those wheels. You can't see them right now. I'll show you them in a minute. And what can happen is if your the track for your door gets very dirty with sand and debris and leaves and pine needles and who knows what all, right here, um, the too much debris there, then um, what it will happen is as the wheel rolls over the debris, the wheel will come up on the track and jump off. That's one thing. The second thing is if the door is not properly adjusted, just regular usage can cause the wheels to come off of the track. And the third thing is if the door is shut and somebody doesn't live here or doesn't know that the door is shut and they'll walk into it or a door pushes on it, uh, sorry, a dog pushes on it and tries to get out, all those things can pop the door off of the track. So <coughs> I think everyone will know the difference between a door that's working properly, like this one that just slides nicely and one that's binding, and right now we're going to show you how to take the door off properly, clean the wheels, lubricate the wheels, and put the door back on. So with each of these wheels, if you come around here, cameraman, uh, oh, and sorry about my uh, very nasty looking leg injury, it's really not as bad as it looks, I was attacked by a cat earlier, and anyway, can't really help it. So there's a track along here, and then a hole in the, in the track and the screwdriver goes in there. Now if you back up and come at it from this angle with the camera, you'll see some space between the threshold and the door. And when I back this screwdriver out counterclockwise, you'll see the door lower towards the threshold. What that is doing, it's retracting the wheel up into the door and creating some clearance there for the, the door to drop. So I'm going to Turn that screw counterclockwise, and this one as well, turn it counterclockwise, and it is going to retract the top wheel into the door frame. Okay, and then I'll do that. And now all of a sudden, this doesn't slide as well. I can feel it binding already because the wheel is not taking the weight, and there's now friction between this part and this part. So, it's interesting, those wheels are fairly important. So next is, you've got to peel out the weather stripping in this corner to get at this adjustment screw. And I'm turning it counterclockwise. And now the door can drop all the way. And then I'll do the same. Oh no, I just ripped that. Alright, well don't do what I did and peel it there. Peel it from the top. Do that counterclockwise, uh, screw that counterclockwise as well. And now I'm going to lift up on the door, and you should be zoomed out here, up on the door and pull the bottom of the door out. It may not come easily like that. Oh, there's one. A lot of force saving here, but. Okay, this one came out, and this one did not. So I either didn't uh, adjust that wheel enough. Or um, sometimes, sometimes these doors are just difficult to come out. So what I did is, you can see the wheel right here. I just, I just put my screwdriver up against it, rolled the wheel up over the screwdriver, and as I was doing that, pulled the door out, and the bottom popped out. Now I'll lift the bottom out, and now I can lower the top, and so you can now get a great view of the wheels. So here are the top wheels, and you can see them spinning nicely, and they're spring-loaded, spinning nicely. Uh, when we took the door off the first time, the wheels were quite stiff, and one of them would not spin at all. Um, it just wouldn't spin without putting an incredible amount of force on it, torque on it. So what we did was we would push it to the side, get a can of silicone lubricant, we'd push it to the side, spray the little little uh, axle that it spins on and you know do some from spray it from both sides spin it around a few times you know the wheels freed up 
If there was any dirt on there, we would have cleaned it, but they were actually fairly clean. So that's how we lubricated them. Do all four wheels like that. And now I'm going to point out something that we noticed after we took the door apart. Here's the wheel uh, looking perfectly round and everything is healthy with the wheel. But you can see on this part, it's broken right here and good right here. So probably a view from this side would be good to show that. So you can see it's broken right along there. And what that means is this wheel is more likely to jump the track than if the wheel hadn't been damaged. Now why was that? Why did that happen? Well, the door was probably adjusted properly and someone forced it open. Uh, they walked through it and broke that part of the wheel off. Well, we got this wheel freed up nicely. All the wheels are spinning and we're going to just see if that alone is enough to make the door work properly. If it does jump the track, I'll be replacing this wheel and probably make another video of it. So let's see what we can do here. Let's put this back in place. So now that we've got the uh, wheels all lubed up and freed up and our track is clean, we're going to start by putting the wheels in the top of the door in the top track and then move the bottom of the door in. And now, just like I had trouble getting that wheel out, that wheel getting it in, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to roll the wheel up over a screwdriver and now it's in place. I can see it dropped on the track. And this one, I'm going to stick my screwdriver here. Oh, might take a couple of tries. There, now that's on the track. Now, even though it appears to be like, hey, that's great, that's sliding, there's so much play in the door, I can move it up and down. And that is not good because it will cause binding as you open the door quickly and various things like that. So what I'm going to do is, if you want to trade places and come out like this, um, I'm going to tighten this up clockwise until you see space between the threshold and the door. So let's do that. And there you go. You see the door rising up above the threshold. That's good. So I've raised it up. You want just, oh, two or three millimeters, four millimeters there. But I can still, and if you back out, zoom in, way out, way out, way out. I can still raise and lower the door. It goes up and down. And you don't want that. You want the door locked in place. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit further. And now I'm going to tighten top one so that the door cannot go up and down anymore and it cannot anymore oh but I've tightened it too much because that's now binding a little bit so I'll back this off just a little bit perfect so this oh, oh that was perfect here tick 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 and what we noticed was the wheel which is right there it was rolling over this spot right here now this is an aluminum threshold 
and aluminum is a soft metal, something hard was dropped on that and caused a burr on the track right there. So what we did was we took a flat file and filed the burr down all three sides, both sides and the top of the of the track. Actually I think it was right here. It's right here, yeah. And we filed it down the best we could and now there's absolutely no binding when the door goes over that. So there's your DIY video on how to clean and adjust your sliding door. And if you have a problem with any burrs on the, the track, that's how you can take care of it. Good luck with your do-it-yourself video.